venereal disease, or as it is now known, sexually transmissible disease, is due to a number of different organisms singly or together causing clinical presentations. In order to help laboratory workers develop an adequate understanding of the appropriate laboratory procedures for STD specimens, this program will look at clinical presentation, specimen, collection and transport, and basic laboratory procedures and the relationship between each aspect. The three most common presenting clinical situations are urethritis, vaginal discharge, and ulcerative lesions in the genital area. As the diagnosis of STD is complex, it is important that an accurate laboratory result is issued. But to obtain a useful result, it is essential that full clinical notes are supplied and that the laboratory worker understands these notes. Peter here has heard the terms urethritis, vaginal discharge, ulcerative lesions, and knows the major causative organisms of STD are Niacerea gonorrhea, Chlamydia trachomatis, Herpes simplex, Treponema pallidum, Candida orbicans. But has no clear understanding of the relationship between clinical presentation and causative organisms. So we have arranged for a visit to the Communicable Diseases Clinic and a talk with Dr. David Bradford. Morning, Doctor. Hi, Peter. It's Good nice and nice of you to come over. Thanks for having me in today. It's okay. What can I do for you? Well, I've just got a few questions I'd like to mm -hmm. ask you. Dr. Bradford, the organism most people associate with sexually transmitted diseases, Niacerea gonorrhea. Could you please tell me about the clinical presentation of this form of sexually transmitted disease? Yeah, sure, Peter. Well, gonorrhea in the male usually presents with a urethral discharge, which is thick and purulent. In the female, it may present with a vaginal discharge, but obviously in females, uh, gonorrhea is very frequently asymptomatic, and that's because the site of infection most commonly occurring in gonorrhea in females is the cervix. Um, other sites of infection that can be involved with gonorrhea are the rectum, the uh, throat, and these sites tend to be asymptomatic, so they don't tend to have symptoms associated. Uh, in the newborn, you can get a gonococcal conjunctivitis, and rarely in adults you can get a gonococcal conjunctivitis as well. And I suppose it's important to point out that in infants and uh, females before puberty, the vagina may be the site of an infection, and a gonococcal vaginitis in a child may indicate sexual abuse. I believe that chlamydial infection is now the most common form of sexually transmitted disease. How does this present? Yes, I think it is the most common form and it presents rather like gonorrhea, except that the symptoms tend to be milder with chlamydia and therefore more easily uh, overlooked. Um, in the male, again, a slight urethral discharge is the commonest way a chlamydial infection presents, although it's likely to be much less marked than in gonorrhea. And as a rule, female patients tend to be asymptomatic. Uh, Therefore, I guess chlamydial infection in both sexes tends to be more silent than with gonococcal infection. Um, in males, unfortunately, most chlamydial infections tend to be termed non-gonococcal urethritis because uh, the, the diagnosis rests on a gram stain, and a gram stained uh, smear shows polymorphs but no gram-negative diplococci. Now, I suppose the most other most commonly occurring form of STD, uh, apart from chlamydia, is uh, herpes simplex virus infection. And uh, herpes simplex infections in both sexes tend to occur on the genital region as clusters of small blisters, um, which are often painful, and which fairly rapidly break open, leaving shallow, tender erosions or ulcerations. In the male, the area under the foreskin or on the glands of the penis is the commonest site that's affected. And in the female, uh, the entrance to the vagina, and particularly the fourchette region, is the most common site. But really, any anogenital site can be affected with uh, genital herpes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in the female, the cervix may be, may be affected, and this may be the only site. Uh, 
and uh, that occurs in a small percentage of women and therefore they tend to be uh, to, for these infections to go unrecognised. Uh, it's very rare in the genital region in childhood and of course in childhood the most common site for a herpetic infection is on the lip which tends to be caused by herpes type 1 whereas the genital form of ulceration tends to be caused by herpes type 2. Most people believe that syphilis is in decline or at least controlled. Do you see many cases of syphilis? Well, I've got the figures here in the clinic that I work in um, over the past 12 months showing the incidence of the various sexually transmitted diseases and in particular syphilis and you'll notice that the incidence of syphilis is really very low compared to the incidence of gonorrhea and even more strikingly low compared to the incidence of non-specific genital infection particularly chlamydia. Um, only primary and secondary syphilis are now seen clinically in Australia. Tertiary syphilis is so rare as to be uh, virtually uh, disregarded nowadays. I suppose we would see three or four cases of syphilis a month in the clinic. Um, both male and female patients will present in a primary attack of syphilis with a, an ulcer somewhere on the genital region or maybe in the anal region as well and uh, this is a painless ulcer. The secondary stage of syphilis also commonly shows up and that is uh, exemplified by a rash and sometimes with some swollen glands, maybe a sore throat and a bit of fever. I suppose the commonest way though that people with syphilis are picked up is by a positive blood test. They turn up quite asymptomatically, uh, perhaps with some other sexually transmitted disease they have a blood test and this is uh, positive and this is termed latent syphilis. I guess the other point worth making about syphilis is that the commonest group affected in the community are homosexual men um, and that their incidence is many times greater than in heterosexual patients. Now, candidiasis I guess is another common presentation and many females present with candidiasis or thrush they usually complain of an itching in the vulval region and a white curd-like vaginal discharge. Uh, candida may be sexually transmitted, but I guess uh, most female patients uh, develop a candidal infection spontaneously or perhaps because of an associated uh, taking of antibiotics or, and sometimes diabetes and uh, sometimes oral contraception. In males, uh, a candidal infection does tend to be sexually transmitted and occurs on the glands or underneath the foreskin uh, where it's termed balanitis. And here there's a red, rather flaky rash, sometimes with some white adherent plaques. Um, it's more common, of course, in the uncircumcised male than it is in the circumcised because the, uh, the candida uh, fungus likes warm, moist places. Well, Peter, of this brief rundown of uh, clinical presentations, I suppose it's obvious that one presentation may be caused by many different etiological agents, and uh, one etiological agent may provide many different clinical presentations. Therefore, there's a great need, I believe, for accurate laboratory investigations. True, but, but it is worth noting that from the laboratory point of view that the appropriate specimens are collected and clinical notes provided. Right. And one problem that we have with specimens is the asymptomatic patient. Now I suppose that it is important that the laboratory receives as much information as possible about the contacts and that the appropriate specimens are collected. Is this correct? Yes, I agree. It's really essential that the laboratory be given the correct information necessary to provide the appropriate service. What range of specimens are usually collected from asymptomatic patients attending at your clinic? Well, in the male asymptomatic patient, uh, a direct culture from the urethra for gonorrhea is performed, and if the patient is a contact of a positive chlamydial case, then a culture for chlamydia is also performed from the urethra. An asymptomatic female has all the following tests carried out, a urethral, cervical, anal and throat culture for gonorrhea, um, urethral and cervical smears for gonorrhea, which are for microscopy, uh, vaginal smears for gram stain and culture for Gardnerella and trichomonas, and wet preparations for trichomonas and clue cells. And uh, finally, a cervical culture is taken for chlamydia in the female.
Uh, now that we've considered the clinical presentations, I guess we should look at specimen collection in detail. Um, patients with urethritis or vaginitis who are considered likely to be infected with Neisseria gonorrhea, Candida, Trichomonas. Um, the following specimen discharges and transport procedures are required. Uh, first of all, a wet preparation. Um, if the laboratory is not adjacent to the clinic, then a swab in one to two mils of saline is adequate, provided it reaches the laboratory in under an hour, because trichomonads tend to become non-motile in two or three hours' time. Um, if available, the isolation of trichomonas is helped greatly by um, doing a culture for trichomonas using a trichomonas medium. Um, smears of urethral, vaginal and cervical secretions should be made directly from separate swabs by the person collecting the specimens. Uh, and spear, smears made from swabs in transport medium tend to be pretty unsatisfactory unsat in, in general. Uh, swabs used for urethral and cervical specimens should not be inhibitory to Neisseria gonorrhea. Uh, charcoal or serum impregnated cotton, Dacron or calcium alginate are appropriate. And all swabs should be placed in an appropriate transport medium like Stewart's or Amy's and the swabs should be not refrigerated and should be processed within 24 hours of collection. Now specimens for chlamydia collection are uh, even more difficult and must be collected as soon as possible after the onset of infection and they must be transported in a medium formulated to maintain chlamydia effectively. Uh, so the swabs placed in chlamydia transport medium and if a delay is expected then it must be stored at minus 70 degrees centigrade. Uh, fortunately, uh, newer fluorescein labelled monoclonal antibody techniques to identify the chlamydia elementary bodies uh, is available now, but still requires very careful collection of specimens. Um, if a specimen is too thick, it won't stain properly, and it's also important that the doctor appreciates uh, fixing the slide immediately after collection. Herpes simplex uh, infections have to be confirmed by taking specimens from the lesions or by pricking a vesicle and collecting fluid and these are sent in appropriate viral transport mediums to the laboratory um, and if they can't go immediately they should be stored in the ordinary part of the refrigerator until they can be collected. Um, if a lesion has already ulcerated and there are no vesicles then um, the ulcer base must be rubbed fairly firmly with the cotton wool swab to be sure of picking up any herpes virus that may be present. When they are placed in the transport medium the, uh, the specimen swab is broken off and um, it's then transported as I said to the laboratory as quickly as possible. Um, immunofluorescent techniques using a monoclonal antibody uh, provide wrapping, rapid typing techniques that are quite sensitive, again, for herpes virus. Um, but there is a correlation between the maintenance of adequate conditions of transport and storage and the sensitivity of the results. Mm -hmm.
Now, syphilis. It's currently not possible to grow the Treponema pallidum in vitro in the laboratory. Um, and so we are rather dependent upon serological tests for the diagnosis of uh, syphilis. And so um, blood tests are taken and sent to the laboratory for serology. I guess it's important overall to say that all STD specimens should be processed as soon as possible because the majority of the etiological organisms are killed by temperature change and drying. The last one, I've already taken the results back for. In the wet preparation prepared in the clinic or from the swab in saline, the following may be seen. One, motile trichomonads, uh, two, yeasts with pseudohyphae, and three, clue cells, which might indicate the presence of Gardnerella infection. The next procedure performed is usually a gram stain, as this may aid in the choice of media. The salient features of a gram stain smear are the relative number of yeasts or pseudohyphae, the number and presence of polymorphs, and the presence of numerous deeply staining polymorphs with intracellular gram-negative diplococci in a urethral smear is uh, quite characteristic of, of uh, the presence of gonorrhea. In uh, certain common syndromes, the microscopic and cultural procedures described uh, won't be adequate. For instance, in cases of non-specific anaerobic or bacterial vaginosis. Um, despite the confusion over the nomenclature and etiology of this condition, uh, certain accepted diagnostic criteria have been established. Um, bacterial vaginosis is defined by the presence of at least three of the following. First, a homogeneous, malodorous, thin grey discharge, a pH of vaginal secretions greater than 4.5, and the presence of clue cells, as I mentioned earlier. Um, a, secondly, a positive amine test, and in such cases, Gardnerella vaginalis and certain anaerobic bacteria are found in large numbers, and lactobacilli are noticeably absent. Um, no excess of pus cells is, is seen, therefore instead of using the term vaginitis, the term vaginosis is used. And uh, in a wet preparation, clue cells may also be seen. Now, the microtrack specimen. Uh, smears sent for the rapid identification of chlamydial infection require staining before viewing. Uh, the fixative must be evaporated completely before adding the fluorescein labelled monoclonal antibody. Uh, the prepared slides are then screened for fluorescence uh, and elementary bodies are looked for uh, using a times 40 oil objective. Um, the re media recommended for the routine culture of urethral, cervical and vaginal swabs are horse blood agar, aerobic, 18 to 24 hours. <laughs>
trichomonas medium, 48 hours, but this is not required really if trichomonas are seen in a wet preparation. And a gonococcal medium, 5% CO2 for 48 hours for urethral and cervical swabs only. Now, uh, to turn to the virology, at the virology laboratory, the specimen is inoculated into cell culture and a cytopathic effect is usually apparent within 48 hours. Uh, results may be obtained more rapidly by staining inoculated cell monolayers with labelled antibodies, um, fluorescein or enzyme labelled. And after several hours incubation and before the CPE is detectable. Um, typing of isolates is HSV1 or HSV2, herpes simplex virus is performed by ELISA or fluorescein labelled antibody techniques. Now culture of chlamydia involves high speed centrifugation of specimens and these are onto a cell monolayer of either McCoy or HeLa cells uh, for 48 hours. The cover slips with the infected cell monolayer are then removed mounted and stained by Geems's method or with a fluorescent antibody and examined. Uh, culture is usually performed in a specialist laboratory. Um, it's essential to contact uh, this reference laboratory to obtain transport medium and detailed information about collection of specimens and conditions of transport before specimens are taken. Um, finally, syphilis serology there are many tests for syphilis antibodies and these procedures are often performed in specialist laboratories. The knowledge of STD is expanding rapidly and the procedures available for isolation and identification of the causative agents changes rapidly. But the major points made in this program will remain valid. One, the diagnosis of STD is complicated by the number of organisms and clinical presentations involved and therefore accurate laboratory results are essential. Two, accurate laboratory results are dependent upon adequate information on clinical presentation and patient's history, and correct specimen collection and transport procedures. Three, accurate laboratory results also depend on rapid processing, good microscopy, sound choice of media. Thank you.